And I know there have been lots of podcasts done on every single RMN being a unique little snowflake out there with their own unique measurement, own unique methodologies, own unique product portfolios. And the need for standardization across those to benchmark is a critical need. You're listening to Retail Remix, your inside access to candid conversations with the people shaping retail's future. Here's your host, Alicia Esposito. If you read Retail Touchpoints, you know that we cover retail media quite a bit. It's evolution, new entrants in the category, and of course, our goal is to always provide some actionable tips and best practices to help our brand readers to make the best choices for their business. Well, rather than beating around the bush, so to speak, and chatting with analysts and other experts, we're cutting right to the source. Well, at least one of them. Today, we're digging into Albertson's Media Collective with Albertson Media Collective's Vice President, Harvey Ma. I really appreciated this conversation because he got deep, he got transparent about what he's hearing in the landscape, and also some of the strategic benefits that Albertson's Media Collective has as being a relatively new entrant in the market. So we get into some of the work that they've been doing, what they're hearing from brand partners and advertising partners, and of course, the heightened conversations around standardization, especially around measurement and attribution. Harvey is definitely one of the leading voices in this sector, so I'm hoping you find this conversation not just informative, but also enlightening and entertaining. Listen in. Harvey, thanks so much for being on the show. It is so great to have you on. Well, thank you so much, Alicia. We're excited to be here. So we have a lot to get into in a very short amount of time. So let's start at the top here. Let's get into your career. So you're currently vice president of Albertsons Media Collective, but you have such an incredible 20-year career that includes roles at Nielsen IQ and Rondell. That's the in-house marketing and advertising agency for Target, for those of you listening that don't know. But you also had a very expansive career at Target, spanning marketing, merchandising, negotiations. Needless to say, you have seen and lived the experience and evolution of retail firsthand. So I'm curious, what trends, either consumer or just broader industry trends, are most exciting for you right now? I mean, just again, living and breathing this every day. What a great first question, Alicia. I think the obvious answer for all retail execs who have lived in this space is that retail is back and it is thriving. Do you remember, Alicia, not that long ago, there were articles all over the news about brick and mortar is dead and consumers are all going online. And I think the exciting thing for us right now is that not only are we seeing brick and mortar not dead, it is actually the channel that most of us are the most excited about. And I can speak for Albertson specifically. We believe that this in-store focus is going to be a very, very important trend. It's customer portion of the journey to capture over the next, I would say, 18 months and beyond. And then I think the other really exciting thing is no longer are we talking about merchandising and marketing as two separate things anymore, Alicia. They really have become synonymous in terms of how we show up to our customers, full funnel, omnichannel. And that word almost being a cliche or overused over the past few years. I think what the customer is finally starting to experience is that merchandising tactics, so pricing, promotion, placement, and then marketing tactics that go along with that are really starting to mesh and jive together to create better and more personalized experiences for our customers. You are speaking my language, Harvey, because I know we've been covering so much about the need for greater collaboration and alignment between all of these different roles, especially marketing and merchandising, because it all ladders back to the customer experience, right? It's all about the interaction they have with the brand and with the product that they're considering or comparing even. Before we dig a little bit deeper into all this fun, nerdy stuff that I love talking about with my guests, I do want to ask, because you have experience in different industries. So beyond retail, you've also worked in manufacturing, engineering, telecom. I feel like you've kind of started to allude to this, but I'm curious, like what sets retail apart from 
all the other industries that you've been immersed in? Like what really gets you excited to get up and go to work in the morning in retail specifically? Oh, that's an easy one, Alicia. Retail is arguably the closest touch point to a customer that you can possibly get to. And that means both your in-store interaction, your online interaction, but also all those other, what Christy Arjlan, my boss, calls the swirly bits, but social media, all other channels like TV broadcast, radio, print, where you can see all of that come to life. But retail is really where we start to see where customers are voting with their wallets and where if we're doing a great job, that voting happens in the form of monetization and conversion and share gains. And that is a little bit different than kind of when I say working back of the house with things like manufacturing and engineering and telecom, all really critical from a customer experience perspective. But it feels like retail is really just you have the chance to touch and see and feel customers in real time all the time. And that's a really exciting place to be. I love that response. And what was it about Albertsons Media Collective specifically that you were like, oh, yes, like I need to hop on this opportunity? Well, like every other large corporate job, lots of decision making factors go into that. But there were two that really set this apart. The first was the people undoubtedly. So starting with our immediate leader on the collective, which is Christy Argelon. She and I have a relationship working together back at Target, building Roundel together. There's a mantra that we use in the industry that when Christy calls, you respond. And that certainly was the case here for me. Then you ladder up to folks like Vivek Sankran, who's our CEO, and Jennifer Sands, who's our chief merchant. The world is a very, very small place, as you know, Alicia. And I've had the pleasure of interacting with these folks for a large number of years including my time as a merchant or through marketing. So the people really have started to set the culture of Albertsons apart. But then if you think about it selfishly, the chance to build this beautiful engine of Albertsons Media Collective within a startup culture, with an established brand on the Fortune 100, that's kind of like the opportunity of a lifetime. The best part about doing all of this is that we're working in this beautiful incubation model where we move very, very quickly. And we don't have to look for funding because Albertsons believes in what we're trying to do and our customers believe in what we're trying to do. And I would say, Jen, from a merchandising standpoint, made it very clear that our merchandising organization is along for the ride. So when I talk about how merchandising and marketing are much more collaborative as an enterprise, those are kind of the secret I say ingredients that really make a retail media network different here versus some of the other places that we have worked for in our history. Very interesting. So let's dig a little bit deeper into some of the work that Albertsons Media Collective is doing. And of course, this opportunity, right? Like we've been covering retail media, retail media networks for quite a while now. And it's just been so fascinating to see how the space has evolved collectively, but also some of the incredible work that Albertsons Media Collective is doing specifically. So Albertsons boasts 35 plus million weekly shoppers across the country, and there's more than 2,200 store locations and 37 plus million members of the Albertsons for You loyalty program. That's a lot of coverage, right? And please correct me if those numbers are wrong, Harvey, but I'm curious, you know, how do you, how do you guys at Albertsons Media Collective tap into this vast coverage to develop those incredible media solutions for brands? Because I mean, there's a lot there to work with. Yeah, Alicia, I'm impressed. You've done your research. Yeah, you're spot on. (laughs) We try, we try. Yeah, and I think just the fact that you're able to rattle off numbers like that was another reason why coming and building this for Albertsons was such a unique opportunity. One of the things that you really have to think about when you're building a retail media network is scale. And I think you're seeing a lot of articles out there about other retailers, even in our international markets, desperately trying to build retail media networks. But that can't be done if you don't have enough scale to do that. So when you talk about the numbers here for us, what that means for us, I would really say it's three things that make this a viable opportunity for not just us, but for advertisers to tap into. We mentioned reach and scale as the first. I would say just the frequency of customer visits. So you talk about the 35 million shopper interactions across the country. That is an amazing amount of engagement that advertisers can tap into. And then more importantly is the relevancy, Alicia. So no longer is it a just serving ads type environment for monetization. It's really and truly showing each of those 35 million customers what might be uniquely differentiated for them in their shopping journey to create better engagements, ultimately leading to better conversions. And I think for 
all advertisers is something that we should all be striving to do as independent retail media networks. Yeah, that's great. I think those return rates, that overall engagement that a customer has with a retailer is so critical, right? Because, you know, from the advertiser's perspective, whether it's the brand itself or an agency that's supporting the brand, you want to ensure that you're not just getting that coverage, but you are getting that impact, that retention, I guess you could say. So to the end, again, you're working with both the agency supporting brands, as well as the brands themselves. And I'm curious, again, because this space is evolving so rapidly, what questions are you hearing in the field? What are even their concerns? Like, what are they thinking about when it comes to retail media and making the best investments? Great question. We service just over 600 brands and agencies currently today at The Collective. And if you can distill all of that feedback into a few main themes, I'm hoping that the brands and agencies listening, I hope I'm representing you well. But there are things, Alicia, that we hear consistently. The first and probably the most important is, hey, retailer, you are not entitled to our investment. And that's really important because retail media networks have become an alternative cost and profit center for many of these larger retailers. And so this notion of a tax or this entitlement of the money is one that we're trying to break at the collective. I would say the second one is this large call for standardization. And I know there have been lots of podcasts done on every single RMN being a unique little snowflake out there with their own unique measurement, own unique methodologies, own unique product portfolios, and the need for standardization across those to benchmark is a critical need. And then the third thing is you've got to perform. There's a notion that retail media can show you things, both your strengths and opportunities in ways that you have not been able to see them before through traditional media, but it still has to perform in a way that justifies that investment. And so Alicia, I think those three things are more than likely the overarching themes that not just I'm hearing, but I would argue most other retail media networks are probably hearing the same three themes. Awesome. And I think we are going to be touching on a couple, if not all of those themes, which is great. Another thing I want to make sure we get into is the unique value that Albertsons Media Collective is bringing to the table as a relatively newer entrant in context. And granted, we've been covering the space for a while. There are always new entrants, new things they're bringing to the table. But I'm curious, like how you're turning that into an advantage and an opportunity to showcase the innovation that's happening within Albertsons Media Collective. I'm happy to dive into that because we actually feel that being a late entrant is one of our most unique value propositions in what we're calling the late mover advantage. So if you think about what we've been trying to do, most of the leadership team at The Collective, this is not our first RMN build. It's not even our second. For many of us, we have been in this industry building this type of ad tech and martech for a long, long time. And so one of the analogies that I like to use is when they talk about, well, how are you comparing yourself to XYZ? It's not really about making a copycat anymore, Alicia. We have now been in the industry long enough. It's almost like we have experienced what not to do, which is an equally important lesson to carving out the path of what to do. And so I would say that being that late mover gives us a little bit of an advantage because we can be absolutely nimble. We can be agile and dynamic in how we built our platform. We can start bringing innovation to markets where I think more established brands or retailers might have a more difficult time bringing that innovation to market based on system limitations, ad tech limitations, people limitations, culture limitations. But I really think that being a newer entrant bodes well in our favor and lets us move much, much quicker, which is, I think, what you're hearing from most of our clients in the industry. Oh, that's great. And I'm curious, I mean, how are you thinking about and leveraging the broader marketing and advertising ecosystem? Because obviously the owned slash on-site platforms and opportunities are very key. It's, It's a big reason why a lot of brands do tap into certain retail media partnerships. But of course, there's off-site, right? And and we've been covering this a lot. So like platforms like Pinterest, for example, where there is that opportunity to create dynamic and more 
contextual shopping moments for consumers. So what does that opportunity and application look like for Albertsons Media Collective? Oh, Alicia, we're going back into that omni-channel buzzword again, which is, right? I know, I know. I can't help myself. (laughs) Yeah, it's not just on-site anymore. I think that's the really cool opportunity that we have being a late mover is the ability to really think through omni-channel. And for the listening audience, when I get passionate about omni-channel, it's not just about reaching consumers that are on the Albertsons website. We're thinking about everything, starting with their off-site interactions that you mentioned, Alicia. So... If you are at your son's soccer game and you're thinking about cooking a meal for dinner, how do we actually reach them even before they're at the soccer game and start thinking about the recipe they want to create with the kind of money they have and the budget and the time within that household's constraints, but also tying that all the way back to what that's going to look like inside of a store, Alicia, which is going back to what gets us excited about the retail kind of trend landscape. So the ability to tie all those things together, I would say... What you'll see from the collective is a vast set of product solutions that touch multiple aspects of that multi-channel or omni-channel funnel that reach consumers in ways that probably have not been thought of before, all as a means to drive engagement and behaviors, knowing how quickly this landscape is changing. So interesting. Well, before I ask my next question, I have to say, one, I have a son, and two, he plays soccer. How do you know? <laughs> <laughs> Alicia, that's the power of first party. Is that no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> we, we joke about that, but obviously all done with a data compliant, safety compliant and a means of doing that. But yeah, Alicia, it is a beautiful art of being able to reach people in their unique circumstance and then serving messaging and personalized, I would say, engagements that actually prompt people to do something or do something in a way that has not been done before. It's all contextual. And I think that's something that shoppers are demanding. And and by the way, folks listening, it's likely probability, right? Like that you may have a child and they may be playing soccer. So just wanted to flag that, but I thought that was very funny. So as you talk about privacy and data compliance, there's obviously, of course, ongoing discussions about the cookie future, right? I feel like we've been talking about it for a while, but that's neither here nor there. It is a reality. It is on the horizon. So how does Albertsons Media Collective safeguard advertisers from the loss of third-party cookies and continue to win and keep that customer trust? Because again, it's a fine balance. You want it to be contextual. You want it to be personalized and relevant, but You also want to be clear that you are maintaining that trust and you are following the proper protocol. So how is that handled? Yeah, Alicia, that's actually the beauty going back to the theme of newer but late mover advantage. We built the ad and MarTech stack completely in a cookie-less environment, meaning that all of our products all of our measurements, everything we do from a methodology standpoint isn't cookie reliant, which that was a beautiful thing about coming from an environment where we all built products required to be served through cookies or identified through cookies. And so for us, I think that what we've done is we've future-proofed this business in what we know is a countdown towards that cookie feature right now. And those are the types of questions that we would encourage all advertisers to ask for all of their publishing partners. Do you feel confident that the partner of choice you have has maintained your future in a cookie world? And I think, Alicia, the answer to that question may surprise a lot of people when they probe one or two steps deeper. Yeah, it's it's very, very interesting and probably something that we could have an entirely different podcast episode on. But I do want to make sure we hit on measurement and attribution because, again, you know, it's a big conversation. It's a big topic right now, especially standardization because every brand, you know, has its own way of measuring and gauging success and impact. But then there's also the discussion of, oh, well, within different media networks, there are different standards and ways of doing things, which creates a bit of turmoil, for lack of a better word. So how is Albertsons Media Collective not just participating in these discussions about standardization of measurement and attribution, but also supporting the industry as it continues to evolve and grow? We are incredibly proud of the stance the collective has taken in leading the charge for industry standardization. Alicia, there have been dozens of speaking engagements, PR efforts, 
where our leaders have come on stage talking about how important it is, not just to us, but to our advertisers and to the advertising community in general, that if we were able to come to a standardization benchmark, this would actually open up the world to a lot more opportunities for this industry as a whole. Alicia, I'm happy to share that that work has now been taken on and adopted by the IAB. And a huge shout out to Claire Wyatt on our side, who has been instrumental in leading that work from our end, but also Christy, who actually was the first to establish that vision for our team and to drive us towards a world where standardization was actually the benchmark. And I'm happy to also share that while the IAB has taken that project on, we are still very much active on that board. We are very much still marching to that drumbeat, and we will still be engaging in future support as needed with not just the IAB, but other organizations that are involved in that standardization effort. That's great. And I think it's so important to be a part of that broader conversation, to be a part of a community, right? Whether it's the retail industry as a whole, or you know, certain pockets within the industry that are very specialized and focused. So the retail media community is super passionate and engaged and willing to come together, collaborate, and align on direction, which I think will ultimately drive the success of this particular sector as it continues to evolve. So to the end, I'm curious, Harvey, because you are doing this work every day, you have an incredible team, and of course, you're seeing the fruits of your labor, so to speak, with all of the work that you're doing with brands. I'm curious, what other trends or tech do you think will influence the future of retail media? What's really rising to the top for you right now? Yeah, great question, Alicia. The landscape of retail media is morphing and changing so quickly. The two things that would probably come top of mind for me are what we're calling the digitization of in-store. And I'm not saying by any means that traditional forms of media in the store are dead. I think it's digitizing what might have been traditional historically, but more importantly, how to measure that engagement, both in-store and online, will be a trend that most retailers are trying to figure out and unpack, knowing that trying to reach customers throughout that whole omni-channel journey, see there's that word again, is so important as we look at what that looks like for value and lifetime value and incremental audiences and those types of things. So I do think in-store will be the first. The second, Alicia, I would say this notion of audiences, I think retail media has somehow gotten lumped into this whose audience is better type of conversation. And I don't know if you've seen that, Alicia, or heard of that, but if you look at just even our example, Albertsons claims to have a really great grocery audience. Target has a great grocery audience. Kroger has a great grocery audience. Amazon has a great grocery audience. And so I think this notion of whose audience is better, more effective, who can optimize faster, who can show more value to an advertiser in more real time with more accurate methodologies and measurement, I think that is going to be the next evolution. And that's where I think standardization comes back into play where it's no longer about the best seller in the room or the best salesperson in the room. It's really about letting the data show which audiences are performing at a rate that are satisfying to the KPIs for that advertiser. That will likely be where we see tech start to take shape within the future of retail media measurement. It's very interesting. Definitely something we're going to have to keep an eye on and possibly cover in more detail because, again, just given how quickly this space is growing, changing, and on the flip side, Brands and advertising firms are getting more sophisticated, asking more pointed questions about where the money is going, how it's performing. I think that clarity and power of the audience is a very interesting point. So as we close up, Harvey, again, you've done so much work in this space. You've done a lot of collaborative work with brands. I'm curious, you know, looking at this from the inside, what advice would you provide to brands listening right now that are either plotting their first entry into retail media or maybe they already invested a little bit and are looking to improve and scale? I mean, granted, I'm sure like anything in retail, there is no silver bullet, but are there any broader questions that you would encourage them to ask? Any areas you would encourage them to dig into? Just to close things out with some recommendations. Yeah, I would say the one topic that I'm particularly passionate about is just the term retail media. We have all focused on the media portion of things. It feels at times that we've lost sight of the retail portion of things. And so there's a reason why it's called a retail media network. And that keyword retail means that 
the media that we serve should be obviously moving and delivering units and products faster and better. And so that would be the one recommendation is that media in itself is fantastic, but we all have to realize that the whole advent for retail media networks, it's really, hopefully, the North Star should be to sell more stuff. And that's maybe the first advice I'd give, Alicia, is how is retail media helping brands to sell more stuff? And the second thing would be to really tie in what the brand's vision is with the objective. And I say that loosely because all of these agency planners out there who are listening probably have chuckling to themselves when they will hear things like, I want to drive an awareness campaign. However, the KPI mm-hmm. they have coming back is conversion. And Alicia, sometimes those things are the same, but oftentimes those things are unique and different. And retail media isn't the silver bullet for everything. And so I think just making sure that your objectives are aligned perfectly with the actual vision of the brand is something that we could all kind of keep as our North Star moving forward in strategic planning, annual planning, and quarterly planning. I love that. Such a powerful point. It all letters back to the customer, what they expect, but also what you're looking for them to get out of the experience and making sure that there's alignment there with your overall goals. Definitely a good North Star point to close things out, Harvey, but really appreciate you taking the time out to share a little bit about your work, your history, and of course, all of the work that Albertsons Media Collective is doing right now. Thank you so much for taking the time out. Thank you, Alicia. This was fun. And to all of you listening, we'd love to hear your thoughts on the episode. And of course, if you have any questions, we are on social media. You can drop us a line on LinkedIn at Retail Touchpoints or on X at Our Touchpoints. If you have any follow-up questions, comments, areas you want to dig into, again, this space is so fascinating and evolving quickly. So we'd love to hear from you. And of course, we would love to hear your pointed thoughts and feedback on the show itself. Feel free to leave us a rating and review on your preferred podcast player. We're on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, frankly, anywhere else. We are likely there too. And while you're there, be sure to subscribe to the show if you like what you hear. We are speaking with folks like Harvey every week, digging into the latest trends and tech and retail. And if you subscribe, you will not miss a beat. Thanks again to all of you for joining us. We will see you next time. Take care. Thanks for listening to this episode of Retail Remix. Be sure to subscribe so you never miss an episode. You can find us on your favorite podcast player. Until next time, keep mixing it up.